rock the house. I want to take care of business, if you know what I mean, and I hope you do. So buckle your belts, grab your hats, zip your pants, and hoist your bats. We got some rocking to do tonight. Yes, 
well, considering the man hasn't done anything for over 10 years, it's a real breath of fresh air. No, I don't know. No, I'm glad you asked me that question. I think everybody knows how I used to do a lot of drugs. <laughs> but, you know, Bill, drugs are no good for anybody. I've seen a lot of people get messed up on drugs. I've seen people die on drugs. Well, I was saying to Trevor, just the other day, I said, Trevor, how is it that we managed to survive after Jimmy died and Janice died? I said to myself, why didn't we die? We should have died with all that stuff we used to do. Well, yes, Ben, but I was a bona fide drug addict. I did drugs every single day for five years. What was it like? Oh, I tell you, I used to get up every morning and before I even brushed my teeth, I would smoke a joint. And while I was smoking a joint, I'd pop a beer. And while I was sipping the beer, I would cook up a spoon of cocaine, heroin, whatever was lying around and shoot it right into my arm. Get completely wasted. I flip on the telly, oh, maybe order up some food from downstairs, uh, have some girls over, oh, get high with them. I fool around with the girls and then get high some more. I did that every single day for five years. Oh, it was horrible. Oh, it was horrible. I mean, I mean, it was wonderful too. Look, let me tell you, my life now is based on honesty now. Well, yes we did. We saw many tragic consequences. People very close to us. We had a sound engineer. I had a major problem with drugs. Hoover was his name. His problem was that he wasn't just the sound engineer for the man. He was also in charge of getting all the drugs for the man. Because oh, we used to get very high. And oh, I will never forget, we were cutting the Wild Horses album and Hoover shows up. Oh, oh, thank you, Bill. Yes, it is a great album. It's historic. A real rock classic. Indeed. So, we're cutting one horses, and Hoover shows up with a coffee can full of the most amazing white flake Peruvian cocaine. Absolutely pure. Very wonderful. I don't know if you've ever done white Peruvian flake cocaine, Bill, but it is an experience. Oh, I wouldn't mind having a little bit right now. <laughs> I'm just joking, Bill. Just joking, of course. Sincerely. But it was good. So, we took that and we dumped it onto a table in the middle of the studio and started cutting out lines two, three feet long. <laughs> he oh could do three or four in each nostril. <laughs> oh, what a beast! Don't know where he had the room for it in his skull with all that stuff. And we started to play. Now, of course, in those days, we didn't just do coke. We did everything. It was everything. Trevor was smoking Afghani hash round the clock. Nigel was in his crystal meth period. So we had that. Ronnie shows up with a large bottle of NyQuil. Oh, we were blind. We couldn't see straight. We were so high. Completely wasted. And we 
sought at a play. Bill, we never played better. It was, it, it was like the old hat ESP. It was historic. Myself, I looked down at me fingers, and I'm, I'm saying, it's not me playing this guitar. It's not, it's not me playing this guitar. It's God playing. It was all inspiring. <laughs> I said, what was I what was I talking about? Oh, there's a of course, of course. We're well playing this brilliant music for all oh, like two hours. And I happened to look up to the sound studio, and there's moving in the sound booth. He was smashing his head against the glass. Blood running all down his forehead, all over his nose. His nose is all red. Blood is shooting out of it. And cocaine all, all over his beard. His beard was white, so he looked like, like a deranged Sandy Claus. <laughs> well, you see, the thing is, he forgot to push the record button. <laughs> and he went completely star breaking mad. They, 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 they had to take him away in a straitjacket. <laughs> Took him to a sanitarium. The sad thing is, Bill, he was one of my closest friends in the whole world. Oh, it was very tragic indeed. What was that? No. No. I I don't know where he is today. I, I know he's somewhere. He's probably still in an institution somewhere. Maybe he's watching right now. If you're watching. <laughs> yeah, you see, Bill. That's the insidious thing about drugs. You don't realize, oh, I, I, I mean, you, you're having such a good time, you don't realize what a bad time you're having. <laughs> I think that's really the problem with it today. Well, it was for me anyway, but I got straight when I was on tour. I woke up one morning. Typical tour situation. Luxury hotel room. I don't even know where I am. Beautiful naked girl lying in the bed next to me. I don't know who she is, how she got there. Champagne bottles all over the floor. Cocaine on every horizontal surface. And I, I hardly have the strength to pick my head up. So, I pick up the remote control. And I flip on the telly. I'm saved, Bill. I'm saved. You have a man in this country on the telly all the time. He saved my life. Wake out. A James Donahue. <laughs> Donahue was on. Oh, what he said. It hit me. He, he said, if you haven't reached your full potential in this lifetime, you're not really alive. Oh, the profoundness struck me like a thunderbolt. I thought, that man, he's talking about me. He's talking about me. Because Bill, Bill, I was young, talented, or intelligent, wealthy, good looking, very intelligent. Now what am I doing with my life? I'm on drugs day and night. I mean, I can understand if you're talking about some Negro guy or some Puerto Rican guy in the ghetto. Oh, do it, try, I can understand that. But I, in my case, it was such a tragedy. I mean, when you think about it, what a waste of human potential! Such a waste! 
Because Bill, 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 you can have your caviar for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can have your stretch limousines, your conquered flights back and forth to London. What a cash! Everyone treating you like a god. Women are willing to do whatever you want them to do, wherever you want them to do it. Oh, house in LA, house in, in apartment in New York, a home in the Bahamas. Bill, Bill, if it doesn't mean anything, what's the point? You know what I'm saying? But maybe not. Oh, I was straightened out and I went cold turkey. I had all my blood changed. And I feel like, like I've been reborn. I can say today, I like myself. I'm not such a bad guy. In fact, I'm, I'm an amazing human being. I'm, I'm honest enough to say that today. I really come to terms with my own brilliance. It's not a burden anymore. <laughs> and the band got straight to it. Yeah, today we are just one big happy family. We just want to help other people. Yes. Yes. That's why we're doing the benefit. To help the Amazonian Indians. I think they're Indians. The people down there. In the Amazon. And we're helping in the jungle. Well, okay. Whatever. Yeah. Look. Trevor has a home. In Rio. We go there every winter when it's summer there. He has this houseboy. Oh, he takes care of everything. Nacho is his name. He's actually not a boy. He's actually about 50 or so. Lovely, lovely guy. Oh, very brown. Always smiling. Very helpful. Now, Nacho knew that we were into the environment. So he hired a boat to take us up the Amazon. Take a look at the birds and the trees and the flowers and you know, all that shit. So, we go up the Amazon. We come to a turn in the river and there was this clearing. It turned out it was an Indian village. Well, whatever. So, we all got out. Well, I've never seen such depressing poverty. The children walking around barefoot, the doors, dirt, no shoes. The women, the women half naked, breastfeeding their breasts, breastfeeding their babies right from their breasts. Oh, no more water. Couldn't even get a glass of water. And I was harsh. I mean, no Coke, no Pepsi. The chief, he comes out, he comes out to, to greet us. The man, oh no clothing whatsoever, <laughs> completely naked, everything showing. His willy hanging out. <laughs> the only thing he had on was a cold piece of wood on his head with a feather sticking out. Oh, couldn't even speak English. <laughs> oh, it was heartbreaking. I turned to Trevor. I said, Trevor, we have to do something about this. We have to help these people. It's up to us. After all, we are the world, so to speak. <laughs> so we decided to do the benefit. Now, I hate to say this, but so many of these bands, they are just on ego trips. They raise the money and they just throw it at these people. What the hell? These poor boggers, they're primitive people. They, they've never seen money. They don't know what to do with money. We found when we were down there, they really liked many of the things we had. I mean, digital wristwatches, Sony Walkmans, <laughs> cigarette lighters. Oh my god, cigarettes! They love cigarettes! So, 
we're going to be buying those things with them right here in New York with the money, shipping them down to the Amazon. I mean, trying to prove their lives in some substantial way. Do some good for a change. Well, thank you, Bill. Thank you. It's not been. It's not been. So I hope that everyone watching can turn on your MTV and see us. Brought to you by Chrome and Brown Beer. Brought to you by Remington Cigarettes. <laughs> oh, I have to say it, Bill. Bill, I have to say it. Sorry. The cigarette people have been fantastic. Donated a truckload of cigarettes to say now to the Indians. <laughs> or, or you can buy the album when it comes out because for every dollar you donate, a full 20% goes directly to the Amazonian Indians. <laughs> Bill, 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 I, I, I really would like to say one more thing about drugs, if I may. There are so many kids watching right now by our albums, learn the lyrics, memorize them, live their lives by them, so I know that everything I have to say is very, very important. <laughs> and I'd like to say this. I'd like to say this about drugs. <clears throat> I've done a lot of drugs. <laughs> I had a lot of adventures on drugs. Some of my, my music has been inspired by drugs. In fact, I think, I think it's safe to say I've had some of the best times of my life on drugs. But that doesn't mean you have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we were recently invited to the White House to do a special concert for Vice President Quayle. I have his lovely wife, Marilyn. Oh, oh yes, she's hot. She's very hot. I'll tell you. A little story when we get off the air. <laughs> so, he is a wonderful man. Whatever you think of him publicly, in person, he's a very caring, sensitive, very intelligent man. He shared this with us, and I would like to share it with all of you tonight. And here it is. The next time. Someone offers you drugs. Remember, you can always just turn them in. <laughs> thank you, Bill. And thank you. Care? 
That's easier than to die from the acid rain anyway. Oh, you know what happens? You know what happens? The acid rain, acid rain, runs down the trees and mixes with that piss and makes little brooks. And the little brooks, they flow into the streams. And the streams, where's the streams go, huh? The streams go down by the condos where the pipes come out of them, filled with more piss and shit and soapsuds and tampons and puke from their parties they have on Saturday nights because the houses are so ugly, they, they gotta be drunk just to live in them. And the streams, the streams pour into the rivers and the rivers go by the factories where they got bigger pipes and they're spewing out chemicals and compost and, and an arsenic and a neutral sweet. <laughs> the water goes into the river. And then the river gets bigger and it goes by the city where they got even bigger pipes choked with all the slop and the, and the toilets and their garbage disposal units and their hospital. Big pans of laundromats and then had car washes, uh, pizza parlors, and then whorehouses and Ukrainian restaurants. And all, all of this goes into the river. Where does it go next? The river goes down to the ocean. And the ocean. What's the ocean? The ocean is just one big Oil slick with all the shit we pour into it. Oh, but if that isn't enough. No, oh, no. <laughs> They're gonna drag out these giant garbage stacks with tons of burning plastic bags of garbage. And they drag those around. Oh, for a couple of months. Until they stink and they're full of maggots and Oh, they don't go in the ocean tower. And the rich guys drive by. And they're pleasure boats. Oh, and they're fishing poles. And they're drinking their beers and getting drunk and throwing the empty over the side. And pissing over the side. And then they get seasick. And they puke up their steak tartar. And their caviar. And their creme away. And that And all this stuff is going into the water. And what else is in the water? Fishies! Millions! Millions of fishies! And they're swimming around. And they try to get past the chicken bones. And the orange peels, and the syringes, and the pulled up pieces of toilet paper floating by and gets stuck in their eyes. <laughs> they can't even see. There's so much stuff down there. And they, they want to wipe their eyes. But they can't. They ain't got hands. <laughs> they got fingers. <laughs> so they go up to the top of the water and they look around. And they get all covered in oil. And it goes in their gills and their hair. And they get covered and they drown. And the seagull, he's flying by. And he sees this greasy little fish. Oh, he comes down to get free meal. Oops, now he's stuck in the oil too. And in the sea, he sees and he sees them. He sees the auto. And then he turns. And then a polar bear. He sees the seal. He comes to eat it. And he's stuck in the oil too. And then, and then a lion comes to eat the polar bear. And he gets stuck in the oil too. And there you have it. That's the ocean. <laughs> all the garbage, oil, and dead animals. Just sloshing around. But then a hurricane comes. And then a tidal wave comes. 
and the whole mess splashes all over the patients. And there you got it. That's it. Millions and millions of dead fishes all over the beaches. Uh, and then you know what happens. The rats come. And the rats come. And they eat the fishes. And then, and then the cats come. And they eat the rats. And then the dogs come. And they eat the cats. And then the dogs. You know what the dogs do? You know what the dogs do? They shit! <laughs> All over the place. That's what they do. Dog shit. Pigeon shit. Or shit. Rat shit. You can't go down the street without stepping in some fucking shit. Fucking shit. Fuck the shit. The shit. Yeah. Yeah. We're living, we're living in a human cesspool. A human septic tank. We're living in a human toilet. You know what I say? Flush the toilet. That's what I say. Flush the toilet. Flush, flush the toilet. That's what I say. That's, that's what, that's what I say. Sometimes when I'm on the fall, I'm tricky with some fellas. Warm will make the idle calm and lie. How does that guy do it? He always gets the girls. I remain quiet because. I like to keep a low profile. We call it my extracurricular activities. I don't need to advertise. I know what I've got. Oh, and the ladies, they know better than I. I'm not so good looking. I was athletic when I was young, but I'm no Mr. Universe. I'm medium high, medium weight. Never really excelled in anything, certainly not school. And as far as my job is concerned, they can all go screw themselves. You know what? I don't give a shit, because I've got what every guy and every woman wants. And all the looks and brains and money can't buy it. I'm down. <laughs> I've got a long, thick, well-shaped prep. Oh, the kind of girls die for. Oh, oh you're laughing. But so what? Fuck you. <laughs> That's all that. I'll hang out some bar down the Wall Street around 6 o'clock, and here they all come. The guys, oh, their health club bodies and expensive Italian suits. Try to come. They're trying to compensate, you know. <laughs> Women, smart, fresh, oh, pretty. I especially like the ones with the big bow ties and the Adidas sneakers. <laughs> I pick out the prettiest one, and we start talking about this, that. And I, I keep things I'm going to buy a little drink, but I save myself the money, and I say, why don't we get the hell out of here? <laughs> Two hours later, I'm in some strange bedroom blowing smoke rings at the ceiling. <laughs> they love to tell me about their boyfriends and husbands. What wonderful men they are. So nice, so gentle, so dependable, so boring. And they love to tell me what a wonderful cock I've got. So big, so hard, so unlike anything they've got at home. And they love to beg for more. And I love to give it to them. Do you ever see a girl cry because she's so happy? Ever have a, a girl beg to take your clothes off? Ever see a woman 
faint because she's had such an intense orgasm. I have. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's like in school. It, that Greek guy, was it in Plato? He said, everything, everything has its natural place in the world. Everything is in the world in just the right place. And I am a, I am a perfect example of my sex life, platonic perfection. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Oh, this guy's pretty screwed up. Oh, he's lonely. He's obsessed. He's got no love in his life. Don't tell me about love. I've got love. I always keep the choices for a daily visit. That's love, right? I'm saying that's you. Saying that is everybody. But the point is, the point is, I've got love. And I've got all these other things. <laughs> I see a girl walking down the street. I like the way she smiles. Bingo, she's mine. Uh, some of them, some of them get scared after a while. They go back to their boyfriends. That's fine with me. I understand. Oh, it's a lot to handle. Some get addicted, I get rid of them. But most of the time, they are very cruel about it. Whenever I call them, they drop whatever they are doing. Whatever they are doing, and they come to me. A couple of times, girls stop screwing their boyfriends when I call. They understand that this kind of quality and quantity is in a limited supply. <laughs> and let's be honest, sex is what everybody is basically interested in. Great sex with great looking great fucks. There are only so many to go around. And I am one. You know, sometimes, sometimes I, I feel sorry for other people. Sometimes I feel guilty. It's like I'm living in a color movie. Everybody else is living in black and white. And I think somebody's got to live out the dream. Somebody's got to have it all. Might as well be me. <laughs> Go out for the long one. Go back. Go back. Go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch out for the truck, man. Oh, I told you, watch out for the truck. I, I can't help it if you're on cold water, man. That, 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 that. If you're going to the store for some bandages, get me a pack of, of cigarettes, please. Winston Hot Pack. Come on, please. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Shit. Yeah. Hey, Joey. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that block was great last night, man. Gotta get us some more. <laughs> yeah, we smoked it all up. That the pound it goes so far. Oh, party. The party was great, man. You should have been there. Oh, me and Frankie. We go down to the corner. We grab Snoop, but we kidnap him. We bring him up to the apartment. We got five cases, three cases of champagne, four bottles of Jack Daniels, an ounce of blow, and a half a bottle of pot for the three of us, right? Yeah. Ruby. He looks around, he goes, what's all this? I say, what's all this? You're getting married. This, this is your surprise stand party. Oh, 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 oh
got to be at the church at 10 o'clock. I can't get too wasted. Oh, Frankie, Frankie, he's so funny, man. He's cutting lines on a counter. He's cutting lines and he goes, don't worry, man. We won't get you too wasted. <laughs> ah, man. It was, it was, it was great, Frankie. He's so cool, man. He just goes like this. And a bedroom door opens up. And these three beautiful babes come waltzing out of the bedroom. Or in their bikinis. Oh. Well, you should see him in his face. You should see him. He looked like he was going to cry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Though they're friends of Frankie. They hung out for a night and he would introduce them to Bruce Springsteen. Well, I didn't even know he knew Bruce Springsteen. Who oh, well, well, he doesn't. Well, but anyways, we start partying. The champagne, the cocaine, and Frankie gets out these, these porno tapes. You know, to warm up the ladies. The nice ones. The kind of like stories. <laughs> One of them, oh man, this is so funny. This is like, I don't know. Ah, yeah. There's this girl, right? And, and then this chick, she's, she's in our house, and ironing in her clothes, and there's a knock on the door. It's the milkman. I have something for you. I mean, right, right, right. And like, he comes in. I don't think he was really a milkman. And he starts screwing right upon the iron board. Very sensual. Very well done. And then he leaves. And then there's another knock on the door. She goes, who is it? And the guy outside goes, it's everywhere. He goes, it's UPS. I have something for you. This guy comes in and he's holding this package like this. And she opens it up. And his dick is inside the, inside the box. Oh, yo, what a riot. I never would have guessed in a million years <laughs> there was a hole in the box. And it ain't good. And then he leaves. And he takes his dick with him. <laughs> there's another knock on the door. And she says, Who is it? And there's no answer. So she goes over to look out the door. There's nobody there. She opens the door. There's nobody there. She looks down, Joey. There's a door! The door comes trotting in, licking her feet, licking her legs, and she's like, I, I, I can't even watch this. I mean, what am I going to tell the priest the confession? <laughs> oh, yeah. I was watching dog porno tapes. <laughs> oh, that's 15 million Hail Marys, 20 million Our Fathers. But man, I ain't got that time. Well, this is the doctor, the girl I'm sitting with, she's watching this. Oh, man, she's watching this as it goes going on. Yeah, yeah, man, she's watching this. I turns to her, I says, this stuff turns you on? She says, sure, why not? Oh, man, like it's the, like it's the most normal thing in the world the rest of the night. I'm checking myself out to freeze. <laughs> but great partner. We had food because I got the food together. You know how you always want to have you win potato chips and you run out? I got 50 bags of potato chips, the uh -huh. ripple kind, the good kind. Clam dip from the 7 Eleven. Uh -huh. We spared no expense. <laughs> Absolutely. On a couch, and I'm thinking to myself, huh, this is the best party I ever been to in my life. I'm doing everything I love to do. I got a, a beautiful girl sitting next to me. I'm watching TV. I'm eating clam dip with ripple potato chips. I'm smoking joints. I'm snorting coke. I'm tossing shots of Jack Daniels. And I'm chasing them with glasses of champagne. And I'm thinking of myself, this is civilized. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it doesn't get any better than that, man. 
no more can you walk. And all of a sudden, I got depressed. I got bummed out. And you know why? Because I looked over and I saw Louie on a couch. And I thought to myself, he's never going to have it like this again for the rest of his life. I mean, really, man, think about it. Guys get mad at me. They never have any fun anymore. <laughs> Might as well shoot him in the head and go. No, no, no. Come on, Joey. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call up Louie six months from now. You know what he's gonna say? I'm gonna call him up and say, Yo, Louie, let's go out, let's play some pool. And he's gonna say, Oh, no, I can't. I, I, I gotta go up to the mall with my wife. Buy some towels and sheets. <laughs> Guys, I got one towel, one sheet for 25 years. Now, he has to get towels and sheets? <laughs> I mean, who puts these ideas in a guy's head? Oh, you know who. You know fucking who. Ah, God, the party. Oh, man. It was a great fucking party. Just great. So, me and Frank. We get wasted playing, you know, all the old party games, you know, who can snort the most coke, who can make his nose bleed first, <laughs> who, who can toss the most shots, who can see double first. I mean, getting totally hammered. You know, you know when you're like, like, like this, this close to puking, but you don't puke? We were there. We were there all fucking night. Just sitting there, feeling the brain cells die. <laughs> there goes the right side of the brain. I'm a moron. <laughs> oh, it was nice, man. I blacked out three times. I woke up, and Louis over there with this baby coat on, with this angel. He was kissing her, he's got his tongue in her ear, his hand off her shirt. And the next thing we know, he's going into the bedroom with her. Hey, Jimmy, he's not married yet. He's normal. He's got hormones. He's going in the bedroom. So I'm hungry. So I go into the kitchen. I always get hungry when I'm doing quails. So I start frying up these steaks. Don't, don't, don't. The whole trick, flying up steaks, when you're on loose, keeping your face out of the frying pan. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Whoa! Keep burning my nose! <laughs> so five minutes goes by. Angela comes staring out of the bedroom. She says, Oh, you guys, you guys, you gotta do something about your friend in there. What, what, what? What's going on? So, me and Frank, we go running into the bedroom. Ruby is sitting in the middle of the bedroom floor, shit face crying his eyes out. Oh, no, 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 Joey. Really crying. He's sitting there going, I changed my mind. I changed my mind. I don't want to get married. I said, Ruby, Ruby, you've got to get married. They already hired the whore. You've got to get married. I mean, your grandmother, she made a lasagna for like 400 people. Oh, I don't care. I don't care. I'm in love with her. Whoa, he's in love with this Angela? Oh, great. I'm trying to figure this thing out. I'm getting one of those brain to my headaches. All of a sudden, I feel my steaks burning. Oh, and runs into the kitchen. The kitchen, the kitchen is like fire, all different kinds of fire, burning everything up. So we're taking the champagne, we're pouring that onto it, we're throwing beer onto this. Frankie goes, he gets a TV, he throws a TV on it. <laughs> and then the fire goes out. But the place stinks, I mean it smells. There's sticks stuck to the wall, there's clams in everywhere, the place is wet. Frankie, 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 what does he do? Fuck the party, man. Fuck the 
the fucking party. How does he pick up these lines, man? <laughs> he is funny. He should be on TV. I said, wait, 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 wait. The apartment's finished, but the party's not finished. Let's go somewhere, have a nice sit down dinner, have a party there. So, anyway, to make a long story short, we decide we're going to go down to the McDonald's. <laughs> and walks into the McDonald's after the first thing I see. Four health agents sitting right there having some food. Oh, uh, yeah. Great. We sit over here. Now, the girls, they're fooling around. You know how girls get. You know when they're drunk. And they get silly. Louie, he's not even. He's in love with Angela. He's never going to get it for the rest of his life. Frank, he's not even. Because every time he gets me the Hells Angels, that scar next to his eye starts to drop. Me, I mean, I'm in a McDonald's. I'm going to eat, I'm not going to miss out. <laughs> so, one of the girls, she takes my ketchup thing. You know those, those little things of ketchup, those whatever you call them, the ketchup bags, yeah? And she squeezes it, the ketchup goes way up in the air and comes down all over Frankie's shirt. Whoa, she starts laughing like this is the funniest thing she's ever seen in her whole life, right? Now, all the girls are laughing and going hysterical. The Hells Angels, they see this happening. They start laughing. The manager of the McDonald's, he starts laughing. Everybody who works there, they're all laughing. And people in the parking lot, they're laughing. And everybody in the whole world is laughing at Frank. Let's make it out of bomb while we're at it. So I go to Frankie. I said, Frankie, Frankie, let's go out, get some fresh air. He says, in a minute. I said, Frankie, Frankie, there's four of them, there's two of plus. Let's get out of here now. And he says, in a minute. Frankie stands up and he walks over to the biggest house angel. This guy is not even human. He's just a side of a mountain. Guy's got a uh, shaved head and a uh, tattoo. Uh, Satan with Jesus or some fuck on his forehead. <laughs> Big bushy beard ran through his nose. Guy's just sitting there. Blah, 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 blah. Frankie, he goes up to him like this. Yo, shit, you lose this? He's got one of those ketchup things in his hand, and he goes but right in the guy's face. Ah! <laughs> I mean, before this guy can even shit the set, Frank is like bang, 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 right in the guy's face, kicking his ass. Fortunately, I go ahead. I picked up one of those Ronald fucking McDonald's trash cans and I toss it into the teeth of the guy sitting next to him. And so I'm standing and I'm crunching this guy's head. Louie comes over. He's going for nothing. He falls on a guy. The girls, they are throwing French fries and they hamburgers. And then the manager of the dogs, he comes running out with a fire extinguisher. Sticks it in my ear, turns it on, and I started it. Oh, man, what a rush. Frank jumps over the counter, he goes in the back, gets a big pot full of French fried grease, and he throws it all over his hands. Oh, man. Frank, we go running out of my car. Oh, Frank, he jumps in the car, he tries to start the car. Oh, starting. Trying to start the car, car won't start as usual. God, God, get him started. So I'm sitting now, praying. Louis in the back seat. He's got the door wide open, hanging out. He's going, Angela, Angela. I says, Louis, get inside the car, lock the door, come on. And that guy, that inhuman mountain guy. Not, nothing ever happened. Joe, Joe, he stands up and he starts walking right at us. 
Ugh. Right. True. The plate glass window. Bow. Uh -huh. Oh, we're just about to take off. The guy reaches out and he grabs his leg. Rudy grabs me around the neck. Frankie's and he steps on the gas and we're pulling this web all over the parking lot. Frankie's trying to strip the guy off on the trash cans and the curb and all those, those, all those little down bushes they got everywhere. <laughs> it is working. I'm going, Louie, 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 hit the guy. Kick him! <coughs> Do something! Louie, I don't know if he did it on purpose or what. He just turns around. And he pukes all over the guy's face. Ah. <laughs> he let go over there. Ah. <laughs> Louis passes out of the back seat. We slam the door shut. And we take off like a bat out of hell. <laughs> it was fucking great, man. It fucking was great. But, you know, you know what was really great, man? What was like the icing on a gravy bag? Which <laughs> ride? We're like five miles away. I actually's behind us. And we're not even going that fast, maybe 70, 75. And I turns to Frankie and I says, Frankie, why'd you start all that shit, man? We could have gotten killed back there. You know what he says, Joey? He doesn't even look at me. He just keeps driving, and he says, Sometimes you gotta spit in the devil's eye just to make sure you're alive. <laughs> Think about it. Hit my brain like a rock. I'm sitting there, and I look at Louie passed out in the back seat, dreaming about cows and sheep. I look at Frankie. He's driving the car, smoking a joint, a beer between his legs. The music is blasting. And I think to myself, yeah, man, yeah. This guy, this guy knows what he's talking about. He's never going to sell out. He's going to live until the day he dies. <laughs> rock on, rock on, no surrender. We drove and drove all the way out to the beach, man. We made a little fire with the beach. Oh, we stayed up all night smoking joints. Oh, we smoked up that whole half a pound pot, man. We didn't even talk. I thought about what he said all night. It was heavy. <laughs> I watched the sun come up, and I thought about all the water in the ocean. There's a lot of water out there. And that water is just a lot of drops. And I'm like, a little drop of water in the whole world. So I might as well party. Might as well party. Then <laughs> the sun comes up. Rudy wakes up out of the backseat of the car. He's walking down, comes stumbling down the beach. And he goes, I gotta be at the church at 10 o'clock. He's got puke all over him. He wants to go to church. Plapsum. We throw Louie in the backseat of the car. We start driving to church. We run out of gas. Oh, 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 we got there, we got there. Oh, a little late. Oh, about 12.30 or so. But yeah. They gotta postpone it till next Saturday. No big deal, it's okay. Louie's okay. Oh, his grandmother, she had one of those little heart attacks that old ladies get. Well, listen, Joey, 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 shush, 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 shush. Next week, Friday night, we're gonna have another surprise stand by you. <laughs> don't, don't tell nobody. Shush, Joey, one thing. <laughs> Joey, if you're going to come, no girls, they cause too much fucking trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a complaining kind of guy. I'm a happy kind of guy. 
It runs in my family, it happens. I've never been sick in my life, uh, unless, you, unless you have broken bones, which I don't. I, I, I like to stay positive. Stay on the sunny side of the street. You give me a pack of cigarettes, a salad sandwich, a, a, a cup of coffee, some new series, a place to sit down, I'm happy. I'm happy. I don't even need the cigarettes. I should just quit anyway. It's a dirty habit. It's expensive. And of course, you could always find cigarettes. Some people always have cigarettes. They give them to you. But food, food is not the subject altogether. To be aware, no, people don't walk around with an egg salad sandwich in there, unless they're crazy. Now, an egg salad sandwich is going to run you maybe 70, 70, 80, 80 bottles. Bottles or cans. I'm only getting 50. So I'm short of about 20 bottles. Bottles or cans. Bottles or cans. It doesn't make much difference. You know, back, back in the old days, I used to weigh a lot more. I used to be on a diet. All, all, all the time, always trying to lose weight. I don't have that problem anymore. I'm on the egg salad sandwich diet. One egg salad sandwich every two days. You lose weight like crazy. That fat just flies off. I'm going to stay with you. I'm going to patent it. I'm going to get a copyright, put an ad in the newspaper, make some money. Because you see newspapers, newspapers you can get. You can always find newspapers. People just leave them around. Uh, I will. I will know the world. Oh. It's important. It's important to stay informed. I read about a train. In Japan, it goes 350 miles an hour. It gets you there in no time. They got hotels for cockroaches now, hotels for mice. <laughs> I stay away from hotels. Too much money, who's got that kind of money? 10 bucks a night? Forget it. Oh, that, 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 that's 200 bottles or, or cans. That is not in my budget. Uh, it's not a problem. Not a problem, you can always find someplace. There's always some place to stay. You want yourself in some place. The real problem is concrete. The stone. They make everything out of rocks and cement. It's too hard. Whatever happened to wood? It used to be all the buildings were made out of wood. They used to make benches out of wood. No more, because they make wood out of trees. Trees, they don't got them no more. I saw this tree. There was this tree, this, this beautiful tree. They dug a hole, and they put it in the sidewalk. And every day, I come to say hello. And then this guy was backing up his truck. And the truck was making the beep sound, that beep, 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 right over the tree. Oh, you see, the tree can't hear. You see, that was it for the tree. That was it. But what, what are you going to do? It's, it's, it's just in the nature of the tree. If you run them over, they die. They, they're not like people. They can't take the abuse. You take a tree. You replace it with a metal pole, and then there's no problem. Truck hits the pole, that's it. But you lose the leaves. Oh, you lose the leaves and the twigs. You lose the wood. And wood is good. Yeah. And the dogs, dogs like wood. I, I used to have dog. I walked him every day. I used to say, come on, come on. We take care of you. We take care of you. I take care of you. Well, who's going to take care of me? In my old age, who's going to take care of me? That's what I used to ask him. He ran away. Oh, it's okay. They got to eat too, the little ones. <coughs> Everybody's got to eat at some point. It's human nature. It's human nature. I like to eat. I like to eat. It's kind of a habit of mine. Nice egg salad sandwich. Cold.
coffee, cream, and sugar. Well, I'm cutting down on the coffee. I don't drink much coffee these days. 60 cents a cup. Where do they come up with that? That's, that's the question I want to ask. Should be 10 cents. They got you. They got you. Because they got the beans. Oh, they got the beans. You got no choice. It's a cartel. OPEC. But I don't need coffee. I don't need the coffee. People drink coffee to stay awake. I don't need to stay awake. I'm awake. I'm awake. When I'm asleep, I'm awake. You gotta keep your eyes open when you're sleeping because you find a place to lie down and you don't keep your eyes open. Guy comes with a baseball bat and next thing, bang, bang, you're dead. Oh, no more coffee. No more shoes. No more cigarettes. That's it. You see, these guys on the street, they like to fight. I don't got that luxury. I'm, I'm on my second set of teeth. I'm missing a kneecap. I, I can't hear in one ear. I'm like the bionic man. I got the hardware. I, I know Cassius Clay. I got no Cassius Clay. But I say on the sunny side of the street, the sunny side of the street, a guy once told me life is like a half a glass of water. A half a the half, the half a glass of water, and, um, and and you should drink the water. That's what it's, no. Uh, ah. <laughs> no, 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 he said. That is what he said. He said. He said, half a glass of water is better than no water at all. That's it. Half a glass of water is better than no water. Yeah. I look at it this way. I could be living in Ethiopia. Those, those, those guys got it terrible. They got nothing, nothing to eat. They're starving all the time. They just sit there in the sand all day long. It's too sunny. Too many flies. Yeah, that, that's not for me. That's not my bed. I, I, I prefer it here. It, it, it's better here. It's good here. It's good. Yes, it's good. Oh, thank God. Good. Well, oh, okay, I gotta get going. I gotta get to work. You know what they say. Early bird catches the can. Oh, bottles. Bottles or cans. It, it, it don't make no difference. No, it, it don't make no difference. Sit down, sit down. You're looking well. How are you feeling? Good, good. How does it We've gotten results back from the lab and they're very positive. Lots of positive indicators. I'll give you a copy. I think to be on the safe side, we should start to get into a little bit of treatment. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some medication. I'll write a couple of prescriptions, just see how they go. I can't say they're going to do anything one way or the other, but this stuff is strong. They have some side effects. I'd like to let you know what they are, so in case something does come up, you don't get too concerned. <laughs> now, first of all, let me ask you this statement. Do you drink milk, like in your cereal? Your know, coffee, any big products that have milk in them, stay away from milk. That's the first thing you want to do. Milk and eggs. Don't eat any eggs either. Well, because the amino acids can react with the eggs, and in some cases, they can cause seizures. And we don't want that. Now, do we want you to get better, not worse? So, no milk, no eggs. Now, after about a week of medication, you may notice some blurring of the vision, but that will clear up in a few days. Do not worry about it. It just means the medication is working. Another thing we've noticed is that your sex drive will be diminished. You probably won't, well, to a great degree, I would be surprised if you had any sex drive at all. <laughs> now, 
you, you will also might notice a little bit of dizziness when you stand up, but don't worry about that. But what you will find worrisome is when you're showering sometimes, you will be losing some hair. Clumps of hair. Again, this is very normal, if unsightly. And if you're having a problem, I can, I can describe, well, I can prescribe a hat. I can have a glitter right up. Now, it's very common after a couple of weeks to start to get some itching. You might even get what we call an epidermal sebaceous trauma. Just a fancy term for a large scab, that's all. Just a large bleeding scab. You'll get them on your arms and your legs, and that's what this second prescription is for. It's just some cortisol cream to reduce the swelling and itching. Now you will also notice some numbness. Your fingers, your toes, your nose, your ears, all of your extremities. And after about a month, about as well as it is, you will experience some temporary blindness. It's only temporary. Usually when you get up in the morning, just for a few minutes, and it has no real clinical effect on you. But we do find in 9 out of 10 cases, patients are aware of frequent nausea, also when you're getting up in the morning. Nausea, vomiting, incontinence. If you find you're having a problem holding your bowels, I can give you a prescription for that too, for the right hand. And I tell all my patients using this medication to try and keep your meals small so that it doesn't interfere with your nutrition when you vomit. <laughs> oh, bleeding. Yes, 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 yes. Your nose will bleed from time to time. Oh, the first time it happens, it can be kind of funny because you're not expecting it. Oh, you're having a meal with friends. And suddenly you see drops of blood on your plate. It can be embarrassing. <laughs> but just keep a handkerchief handy. And should you get a nosebleed, just hold your head back and dab gently. Don't blow. That's the worst thing. Just dab. Ah, it'll clear up in about oh, five or ten minutes. And look, why that's it? After a couple of months, we'll run some more tests, see how the medication is doing. If we don't get the results we want, we'll try something strong, okay? <laughs> David, it was nice seeing you. Oh, don't thank me. It's just a miracle of modern medicine. Yeah. Oh, David, that insurance claim did come back, so could you drop a check off at the front desk on your way out? Thanks. Take care now. Did you tell him who he's messing with here, Frank? Did you tell him who he's fucking with here, Frank? He's fucking with God, Frank. Did you tell him that? Do you know what God does when he gets fucked with Frank? Do you ever stop him more, Frank? I'm going to do that to his face. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear anything more. He's suing me. He's suing me. I'm going to blow him away, Frank. I'm going to peel his skin off. I'm going to chew his Bones, I'm gonna drink his blood. I'm gonna eat his children, Frank. Oh. And I'm gonna enjoy myself. You wanna know why? Because he's a schmuck, a shrimp, and a shithead. You're fucking with me, that's why, Frank. He should know better. No, no, no. No, 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 Frank. I'm not listening to not a word more. No, la 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 Call him back, right now. Tell him, tell him. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Don't call him back. Call his children. Call his children and tell them to get ready to be eaten. Good bye, Frank. Diane, Diane, who's on line one? What, my wife? Put her on hold. What's for lunch? I'm starving. I, I don't care. Anything. Diane, anything. I am starving to death. No, 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 I don't want that. No, I don't want that either. No monkfish. No monkfish. No arugula. 
no sun-dried tomatoes, no whole wheat tortellinis. I want food, Diane. You know what I mean when I say food? Diane, unlike you, I am a human. I need food. I need coffee. Please, get some. I called Jeff Cavanaugh, put him on line two. Called Dave Simpson, put him on line three. Thank you. Hi, honey. <laughs> I know. I tell her time and time again, don't put my wife on hold. She puts you on hold. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, what did you do today? Oh, that's nice. How much did that cost? <coughs> no, 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 no. The money, that's what it's there for. That's what it's there for. But how does Jack me? Why did he do that? No, no, why did he bite the kids so Well, I told him to. I did not tell him to bite anybody. Sonia. I did not tell, don't, don't tell, don't tell me what I tell him. I told him, can I talk please? I told him the next time he does something, do twice as much back to him. That's what I told him. I don't care what his therapist says. I don't care what his therapist says. His therapist is a co-defendant fraud. No, no, wait a minute. You know what I'm gonna tell? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, Jeremy, bite your therapist. <laughs> Let him work on that for a couple of months. Ah, what else? How did she do that? How did she get it in the microwave? No, no, no. That's what? Three microwave ovens in two years? We have to buy another microwave now? No, no, no. I want to say something. If you hired people who came from a country where they had electricity, we wouldn't have this problem. Well, you have to tell her. What do you mean she'll quit? She won't quit. She's got it great. She spends all day in a luxury New York apartment I spend all day in this office killing myself so she can spend all day in my luxury New York apartment. She spends more time in the apartment than I do. I am not shouting. I, I, this, this is not shouting. Uh, am I shouting? Wait, wait, am I shouting? Is this shouting? This is not shouting. This is disgusting. We are discussing. We are having a discussion. Ah, well, obviously, you're too agitated to have a normal conversation right now. So why don't we wait till I get home? We can talk about it then. I am going to be a little bit late tonight. Oh, uh, around nine. I have a lot of work to do. So, do you think I like slaving and sweating here or all hours of the day and night so that you and Jeremy can be safe and free? Do you? It hasn't been two weeks. It hasn't been two weeks. We just did it. We just did it. We did it just recently. We did it. Just the other. Okay, okay. We'll have sex tomorrow night, all right? No, I won't forget. I'll put it in my book. Oh, listen, honey. Honey, I've been working very hard. I promise next month we'll go down to St. Bart's, spend a couple of weeks by the beach, have a nice place by the beach. We'll make love every day by the Beach, all right? You won't get sand in your crotch. <laughs> Will you stop it, please? Look, I, 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 I gotta go. I got 15 million phone calls to make. I got 20 people on hold. Huh? No. Don't color your hair. No. 
Don't cut your hair either. Nothing with your hair. Don't start with the hair blackmail. No henna. Nothing. I want you to look the same when I come home as you did when I left this morning. That's what I want. I, I gotta get off. Okay, give Jeremy a kiss goodnight for me. Say hi to your mother for me too. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Another one. Orange juice. Oh, fine. Fine. No, I won't forget. I'm not a moron. No moron. Okay. All right. Okay. Because I love you too. I'll be home around 10.30. Uh, 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 uh. Diane, what are you doing in there? Growing the fur? Come on, let's go. I feel like a poster child for Ethiopian relief. My ribs are sticking out. Flies are crawling all over me. I'm gonna be dead in five minutes. Come on. Jeff, hey man, how they hanging? Not bad, not bad. Yeah, yeah, I finished that deal yesterday. Oh, I made 20 grand for chunk change. Listen to this man, dig this. This morning, I cut a deal, I made 75 grand. You know what they say? Hundred grand here, hundred grand there. Pretty soon you're talking real money. Sure, they have to pay me. Oh, if they don't pay me, I go next store. They pay me twice as much. Like Bruce says, man, no surrender, no return. Rock on. <laughs> Gee, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll buy a Porsche for the country house. Park it in front of the tennis court, piss off the neighbors, not even try to just leave it there all the time. Huh? No, 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 I, I can't drive, I don't drive a stick. Whoa, that's an idea. Range Rover. Oh, they're good. Very ecological, right? Maybe I'll get one of those. Oh, maybe get two of those. Uh -oh. uh, 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 no, no, no. Not, not, not tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm busy. I'm doing something. Who am I doing? I'm not telling you, Jeff. I tell you, you're going to tell Nadine. She's going to tell Sonia. Oh, very beautiful. Oh, better than her. Better than her. Yeah, she has breasts. Yeah, she has legs. She has arms. She's got a head. I got the whole package. Jeff, Jeff, the closest you ever came to a woman that's beautiful is that time you bought the scratch and sniff picture of Vanna White. <laughs> and get this, she's an artist. She's very, very sensitive. Well, she picked me up in a bar, how could I say no? <laughs> Jeff, unlike you, I am still committed to my 60s values. I am still committed to experience and exploration. I didn't sell out the way you did. Ha! Unfortunately, you gave up the struggle a long time ago. But for me, it's a matter of principle. Well, yeah, why don't we get together tomorrow and yeah, I'll play, play, play some handball, have some pops. Come to my club. No, 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 my club, Jeff, my club. My club is nicer than your club. It's safer, it's cleaner, it's more exclusive. They don't let in those weird people like they do in your club. Okay, I gotta get off the phone. I have a lot of work to do, unlike you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, thank you, thank you. I am a genius. I am the best. No one can get close to me. I'll let you get close to me, Jeff. You can blow me. <laughs> day, 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 day! Can I say one 
thing. I agree with you 150%. No, 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 David. The man is a wonderful human being, is a mensch. I, I love him. I feel terrible about having to let him go. Yes, I understand that. I know he's 58 years old. I know he's going to lose his pension. I understand that, Dave. Dave, Dave, Dave. There's two sides to this argument. Don't forget the human side of the equation. Now, when I first came to this company, this man was like a father to me. Like my own father, this man. I love him. He's like a blood relative. Oh, broke my heart having to let him go, Dave. Yet, yes. Yet. I know he's going in for major surgery next week. That's not my problem. I'm not his doctor, Dave. I'm his boss. No. 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 But the day, the day, the day. Now you've been talking for five minutes straight. Can I get a word as well? The guy. The guy. He's not performing, Dave. He's not hustling. He's he's easy listening. This place is rock and roll. I need heavy metal, Dave. I need production. I need performance. Yes. Dave, 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 Dave. Let me make it a little clearer. No, no, no. You listen to me for a second. Let me ask you a question. You like the Mercedes station wagon? Well, good. You like your country house? Yeah. You like your swimming pool? Okay. You like skiing in Aspen? You like long lunches, your car phone, that horsey school you sent your daughter to? Dave, Dave, Dave. What pays for those things, Dave? Now, wait, 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 wait. What do you think pays for those things? Profits. That's what. Say profits. Say profits. I just want to hear you say it. Say it. <coughs> just say it. <laughs> Thank you. Now, when the profit axe comes down, anybody's head can roll. I can lose my job tomorrow. You could lose your job tomorrow. You could lose your job today. You could lose your job in the next five minutes if you keep up this stupid conversation. Because to tell you the truth, Dave, I want to get rid of him now even more. Because now he's wasting your time as well as mine. You're wasting your time. I'm wasting my time. All the people in the company are wasting their time. And I have to say to myself, What's the point? What's the point, Dave? What's, what is your fucking goddamn point? Will you tell me? What is your fucking goddamn point, Dave? Oh, Dave, you're not sure? Well, let me ask you this. I mean, out of my own curiosity. Are you happy working for this company? No, no. I mean, are you happy working for this company? Oh, you are. Good. Because I just want you to be happy, Dave. So get back to work. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. All right, okay. I, I hold no grudges. No, 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 no. No hard feelings. We've all been working very hard. No, 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 all right, I understand. Call, call any time and say hi to Judy for me. Oh, oh, oh Janet, Shh. say hi to Janet. All right, okay. Yeah, yeah, take care. Diane, let me make it easy for you. Take your hand, put it in the microwave, grill it, and bring it into me. <laughs> Who's on line four? I got it. Hi. Oh, nothing. 
I'm making money. What else do I do? Oh, I'm working very hard. Oh, now that you call, it's getting harder and harder. <laughs> you being a good girl? Oh, yeah? What are you doing? Making a sculpture. That's interesting. What kind of sculpture? You made a sculpture of a horse and you wrote a horse all over it? That's very conceptual. What do you mean I sound bored? Oh, I'm not bored. Oh, I love talking about your art. I was just telling some 10 minutes ago what a wonderful art you have. Either can I say something? No, can I say something? If you were 95 years old and you were in a wheelchair and ugly as a clock, I would still love you. You want to know why? Because I love your art. That's why. Of course I mean it. Of course I mean it. And when you say those mean things to me, I get angry and, and, and frustrated and, and I feel like coming over there and giving you a, a good spanking on your body. Oh, 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 oh that hurt. All over my body? Then what are you going to do? The whole thing? The phone is heating up and then stop. Oh, anything but that. <laughs> what did I do to deserve this? Oh, I, I am a pretty nice guy. Oh. Uh, and I love you too. Oh, I love you too. Of course I mean it. But then, when I say I love you, I mean I love you. No one else in the world knows what love means the way that I know what love means when I say I love you. From me to you, I love you. No one was ever loved the way that I love you. Because my life would have no meaning if I didn't love you. Well, of course I mean it. Of course I mean it. Would I lie to you? Look, listen, the boss just walked in, and I've got to go off the phone. When am I going to see you? Oh, around six at the loft? Okay. I will. Keep making those sculptures. Ciao to you, too. All right. Okay. Mwah. Again! Cut the food, cut the coffee, send in the mailbox, the shoe sign boy, and hold my calls. Thank you. I'm a child of nature, born to lose. People call me poison. That's no news. When I wake up in the morning, I see what I see. I look into the mirror, what I see is me. A player, a winner, an unrepentant sinner. If you mess with me, I'll eat you for dinner. There are those that rule and those that serve. I'm a boss, baby, because I got the nerve to take what I want, take what I need. Stick it first, baby, I make you believe. Because life's a bitch, and that I know. Don't mess with me, because then you'll go to your grave in a rocket, nothing in your pocket. If you got a gun, you better not cock it, because then you'll die, and that I know. And a wave, wave will blow, and you will spend eternity praying to God that you never met me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, sucker, this man, he dissed me. I had no choice. He showed me his gun, so I went up to him with my screwdriver, and I stuck him with it right through his heart. He looked surprised, man. Skinny kid like me. Ha! When I did that, he didn't even believe. It felt good, man. Fed, 
better than getting laid on a sunny day. <laughs> and I like to feel good, man. Feeling good makes me feel good. And I want to feel good before they lock me up. I used to get up every day and I have two things to worry about. How to find money, how to spend it. The rest is all gravy, man. Like the man says, don't worry, be happy. That was me. And that was the Reagan years, man. I'm gonna miss him. Ronnie Reagan, he was my main man. He had that cowboys and Indian shit down. Now, he's out in LA sitting on some horse and we're sitting in the shit he left behind. But that's okay, he's gone. There's a new man in charge. Batman. Batman is my main man. Man, be beaming around like Kirk and Scotty, like the Jetsons, man. Beaming around, jumping to my Batmobile. Get behind some smoke windshield, stick in the CD, flip the dial to 10, rock the engine, whoa, burn the brakes, man. That's living. You can smoke that shit. You only live once. You gotta grab that gusto. My best friend in school, he worked at McDonald's. He worked hard, too. First, he became assistant manager. Then he became manager. Guess he figured he forgot enough. One day, he's gonna be president of McDonald's. Man, he was making 450 a week. Had it nice. Had himself a duplex rental apartment, a Ford Escort, and then one Friday night, son. Some doubts come in with 38 specials and they greased them for the receipts and then BAM! BAM! In the back of their head, execution style! That sucker, he missed the whole point. He's standing on that platform and that train be gone. You see, you want to play the game. You got to think about the big guy. You got to think about God. God made man seem as himself. You want to learn how to live like God? Check the big guy out. God, man, he gets up every morning. He don't smoke no crack. He don't shoot no dope. He don't flip no burgers. No, man. He gets up and he looks down on the world and he says, Well, what am I going to do to you today? Oh, let's see how about this. I'm going to make an earthquake today. <laughs> how about this? A tidal wave. Oh, let's see. Maybe I'm a little bored. I think I will crack up some trains in India. Kill me up some dot heads. Crash. Oh, maybe, maybe. Maybe I'm feeling a little evil, and I'm burned down a little elementary school fryer, some nine-year-olds. Oh, maybe, maybe I'm feeling real evil. I'm gonna mix up some some disease, sprinkle it all over them, them, them homosexual fans, make them sick, make them ill, make them cry, make them die a slow and painful death. You see, God's a player. He likes the action. God likes to rock. He likes to get high. But God, God don't, don't, don't shoot no dope. He don't shoot no dope. He lets the dopes shoot each other. Man, I know how he feels. Before I was in the joint, I used to get me a 10 gate shotgun, man. Shoot me up some super rats. Man, I swear. They just vaporize when you hit them. Like a radar makes a nice sound. Kaboom! That must be what it's like to be God, man. That's the noise. That's the... I'm fun. Fun. You see, people, they don't understand. Listen, I was running down the street, uh, down the neighborhood, trying to get away from this guy chasing me. He wants to put a bullet in my head. So 
I jumps inside this church. Middle of the day and there be this bunch of little kids in the church. Who oh, they're praying. In the middle of the day. Little, little tiny head, or little tiny butts. I say, yo, teacher, what you be doing in, 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 in this church in the middle of the day? And she says, boy, we's in here praying. We's praying for peace. We's praying oh, for nuclear disarmament. <laughs> oh, lady, you be praying in the wrong place. This be God's house. You go pray somewhere else. You, who you think make all that shit up, man? Who you think make make that nuclear bomb? Who made up that poison gas and dynamite and rockets of bombs? They's his toys, baby. Oh man, I was laughing. I was laughing. Oh man, I was laughing so hard. I fell on the floor. Um, my gun fell out of my pocket. Went on. Shut up. Right through the cross on the altar. Just see, you got a figure. You want to room with the big guys. You got to think big. Bigger and bigger and bigger. That's what I do. I think bigger every day. God, I think about God. I want to get closer. I want to get closer to the power. Get more spiritual, more, get more close to God. Get stronger and stronger and stronger. That's why the next time I get into the joint, I'm gonna get me some wheels and an Uzi, man. Big balls. You gotta wake up, smell the coffee. What goes around comes around. If you can't make that shit happen, get out of Gotham City. Jimmy, I'm in the backyard. Come in. Come out. Come to the backyard. Oh, every time I have the right color Mario, I feel like I'm going to blow up. Hey. What do you think? Olympic size. Olympic size, they say. I, I want the best. I want the best pool you got. Give me the biggest, best pool you got. I don't care what it costs. I, I got a model chimney. It's very simple. Take care of the luxuries, the necessities, take care of themselves. You only live once, Jimmy. You gotta go for the best in this life. You gotta grab all the gusto you got. Well, I, 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 100 grand is not important. It's like, like when I was buying my BMW. I said to myself, I could buy a 750, or I could save a little money. Buy a 535. Well, then I think to myself, I buy a 535. Oh, I'm in the middle of the highway somewhere. So, oh, 750 passes me up. I'm gonna get pissed off. Ah, another 800, 900 bucks a month. Why, why waste the aggravation? Oh, buy the 750. You, you should get yourself a BMW. Show them where that that shit box you drive. It's embarrassing. What? What do you mean you can't afford it? Of course you can afford it. Don't give me that crap. Oh, you know, you know what's wrong with people like you, Jimmy? And I'm just trying to be helpful here. You're full of crap. See, the only thing that's stopping you from having a car of your dreams is fear. You are afraid. You're afraid to have. You're afraid to own. You're afraid to live. Hey, how much you make now, huh? 19 grand a year or 22 grand a year? Get yourself a BMW. What are you afraid of, huh? You gotta live, Jimmy. You don't live, Jimmy, you're dead. That's 
that's what life is all about, living. I want to, I'm going to buy something, I buy it. I want to go someplace, I go there. You see this cigar, huh? This is a Havana cigar. Why do I smoke Havana cigars? Because it's the best cigar, that's why. I, I can smoke something else. I could save myself 15 bucks a pop. I could smoke something else. Oh, <laughs> why should I? Huh? Oh, so somebody else could smoke this cigar? Fuck yeah, it's my cigar. It's my cigar. It's my life. It's my cigar. I'm moving. I, I even exercise. I got a life. Now we got the pool. I come out here every morning. I jump in the pool. I swim a whole lap. Then I go in the house. And I have a healthy breakfast. Yeah, yeah, I eat those, uh, those old brand muffins. I can't stand the bread I eat them. They're supposed to be good for you. I have all oh, four or five muffins, scrambled eggs, bacon, sausage, big pot of black coffee, and I'm alive, Jimmy. I'm alive. I, I'm 51 years old. I still make love to my wife like it's our wedding night. Ah, I know guys, 10 years younger than me, they don't even know they got a dick. They're in the shower and worn out, and get a lot of watch and no, no. Whoa! What's that? <laughs> they think it's a growth sticking out of their bodies. <laughs> yeah, you see that there? You know what that is? That's the gazebo. Guy who sold me the pool, he says, oh, you gotta have a gazebo. If you don't wanna have a swimming pool, you gotta have a gazebo. And that's the best one they got. Cost me five grand. I don't even know, I don't even know what it is. You see, Jim, Jim. Perfect example of what I'm saying is, Vito Chaplet never did nothing in his life. He never smoked, he never drank, he never chased skirts, he never gambled, never walked when it said don't walk. And you know where he is today? With all his money in the bank, he stands in front of the old candy store from 9 o'clock in the morning till 9 o'clock at night reading the newspaper. He lived his life so good, he forgot to live. What's the point of being alive like him? Might as well be dead. Dick, dick, dick. They tell you, cigars take three years off your life. What three years? What three years? What, 86 to 89? <laughs> Who needs them? Get me the cigars. Yeah. I, I shouldn't have had that second piece of cake. Oh. There are people, Jimmy, all over the world, starving to death. Oh, in Africa, in Asia, in Armenia, they sit around all day, starving. They just sit in the dirt. They ain't got a pot to piss in. But those people, they all have, they all have, they all have what? Dreams. They dream. What would it be like to live in America? What would it be like to have a car, to have a house, food, a swimming pool? Hey, Jimmy, I can't let those people down. I'm here. I'm living it. I might as well enjoy it. You know, I read in a magazine, I read about a resort in Hawaii, you can swim with the dolphins, and bang, I'm there. They open up a new casino in Atlantic City. I'm there the first day it's open. They make a new TV set, oh, 10 feet wide, two stories high. I buy it because I'm alive. I'm alive. Jimmy, it's my life. If I don't live it, Who's gonna? I, I'm 
gonna live until the day I die. <laughs> then I can rest. Jimmy, you know what you need? You need a nice swim in my new pool. Come on, put on your trunks. Come on, go step out of it. Step out of it. You're jumping the water, Jimmy. Jump in the water. The water is not cold. It's beautiful. Jump in. You know what I'm saying, man. It's like, it's like, if everybody knows everything, then nothing means anything. Everything's a cliche. That's why I stopped making art. You, you know what's wrong with the world today? <laughs> why everything is screwed up, but you can't do anything about it? Because we don't live in a human world, we're living in a machine world. This is God. I, I can see him from my apartment down in his apartment across the street. All night long, every night, he lies on his couch, doesn't move for hours, man. His eyes wide open. Now, if I didn't know that guy was watching TV, <laughs> I think there was something seriously wrong with him. Like he was paralyzed or hypnotized or something. All night long, he lies there. And the messages from outer space go into his brain. Buy a new car. Use deodorant. Work harder. Your dog has bad breath. Buy a microwave oven. I do all night long, man. I mean, what's a microwave oven, man? Everybody's got one. Nobody knows what it does. Nobody knows how we work. Everybody's got one. Why? Why does everybody have a microwave oven? Because the TV set told him to buy it. That's why. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, the government is building this computer, biggest computer they ever built, spending billions, billions of dollars on it. It's a secret project, but I read about it. Oh, when they finish this computer, we're all going to be dead, man. Because they're going to lock this huge computer to everybody's TV set. And then they're going to reverse the TV set so, so they can see in your house, see you do your thing. They're going to watch you, man. Oh, you do something the computer doesn't like, man. It's going to send a message to the TV set. TV set's gonna send a message to the microwave oven. <laughs> when that door's gonna pop open, you're gonna be ashes, man. <laughs> whoa, 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 you don't believe me? Go in the store, pick something up, pick anything up. Everything's got those little computer lines. Everything. What do those little lines mean, man? And nobody knows. <laughs> nobody knows what they say, man. Because it's not English. It's computer. <laughs> All these computers are talking to each other, man. Nobody knows what they're saying. It's like, it's like we're living in an occupied country, man. <laughs> All day, all night, long night long. These computers, they're talking to each other over the modems and the fax machines, and the satellite link-ups. All day, all night, man. What are they talking about, man? What are they talking about? Oh, I'll tell you what they're talking about. They're talking about you and me. 
how to use us more efficiently. God, you see, they don't have feelings, man. They're just machines. All they care about is efficiency. They're like, they're like, like, like a giant Spartan warrior. Oh, with armor on and stuff. And we're like, oh, tiny, white, fluffy kitten walking by. Oh, Spartan warrior, he picks up the fucking kitten and goes, what should I do with this? Should I eat it? Should I crush it? Should I throw it away? Okay, man. They don't have any feelings. Machines don't have feelings, man. Hey, the worst human being who ever lived had feelings, man. Genghis Khan had feelings. Adolf Hitler had feelings. I mean, every once in a while, he'd get a little bummed out. <laughs> oh, computers never get bummed out, man. Oh. You know how they make bacon? No, no, no. No, I mean, really. You know how they make bacon? They got this giant packing plant in, in, in Idaho run by computers and robots. And way down at the bottom of the assembly line, they have to have a human being because every piece of meat is different on these 24 blades. Razor sharp blades come down, slice the meat, that's how you get a slab of it. So no, it comes in now, comes into work, and ah, he's not even thinking about what he's doing. And maybe he had a fight with his old lady, oh, whatever. He sits down, man, at his spot, and down come the 24 razor sharp plays, and instead of a hand, he's got a half a pound of slice and <coughs> smoke on a star. Boom! Right? <laughs> Happens almost a week. Nobody does anything about it. Nobody cares. I mean, who's the care? Machines run everything, man. Every day. Machines put all more oil in the water, more poison in the air. They chop down more jungles. I mean, what do they care? They don't breathe the air. They don't drink the water. We do. <laughs> oh, stoned man. Man, I wish we had some music to listen to. I used to love to listen to rock when I got high. Oh, the great bands, Jefferson Airplane, the Stones, the Who. Well, they're all dead now. What? Those bands are touring around. <laughs> you think that's the Stones, man? Oh, you think that's the who? Ow! They're robots, man. <laughs> they got it. Robots just listen to the music. All the hands. What did they sing about? Love, peace, anarchy, freedom, revolution, get high. Oh, the new band sing about fear, paranoia, work harder, buy a microwave oven. <laughs> they're just, they're just, they're just trying to brainwash us, man. They're just part of the system. If they weren't part of the system, we'd never even hear about them. All the bands are for the system: Janice, Jimmy, Morrison. They killed them all. Made it look like accidents. No one got that, man. All that's left is the system. And the system only has one message, man. Fear. Fear, 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 fear. That's all they tell us all day and all night. Fear. Because we're like, we're like nice little mice in the cages. Oh, man. We're running, running on our wheels as fast as we can because, because we're so afraid. Every day, we get a set of air. Jane, do Captain Caffeine. 
jump in the car, get stuck in traffic, get to work, oh, we yelled out by the board, make a deadline, drink more caffeine, get back in the car, get stuck in traffic again, oh, get home, pay bills you can't afford, oh, cook your microwave dinner, jump in the bed, and whoa, wait, 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 wait. I forgot the most important thing. Watch a little TV. <laughs> Gotta get those messages in the head. And I get up in the morning. The next morning, I do it over again. The next morning, do it over again. 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 Over again. Over again. Uh, and they call that being responsible, man. Everybody's scared, man. They're afraid. If they don't do what they're supposed to do, they're homeless. That's what the homeless people are, man. They're a warning to all of us. Stay in your cages. Don't rock the boat. I mean, do you ever talk to any of those guys on the street, man? Everybody says they're crazy, but you stay on the street for a while, see what kind of ideas you come up with, eh? <laughs> you don't go crazy, man. You start to see the truth. You start seeing the truth. You start telling the truth. You start talking about the way things really are. That's why they keep those guys on the street, man. The system is afraid of them. They're afraid of their freedom. Freedom is the opposite of responsibility. Freedom, yeah, it's a poison. It's a threat to the system. That's right. Everybody's afraid of freedom. They're afraid they're going to get hot. They're going to think a thought or two, realize what bullshit their life is doing, and freak out. That's what I stop making art, man. I mean, what's the point of talking about it? It's hopeless. You write a book. Best book ever written, makes bestseller list. Everybody reads it. Two months later, it's forgotten. There's another important book everybody's got to read. Oh, you write a song? Oh, beautiful song. Makes top 40. Next thing you know, it's a jingle in a beer commercial. Oh, oh, you paint a painting. A beautiful painting. You spent your whole life painting the painting. Millionaire buys it, hangs it on the wall of his corporate headquarters. Oh, I mean, in the old days, man, rich people used to bite a lion's head and get tiger's heads, hang them on the walls, made them feel powerful, made them feel safe. The system collects on its minds, man. It sleeps better at night, knowing that the best and the brightest are dead from the neck up. <laughs> That's why I don't give them the satisfaction. I keep my mind inside my head where they can't get at. <laughs> Everything becomes part of the system, man. The only way to escape the system is to not do anything. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> oh, man, I want to paint a painting? Oh, I want to write something? I do it in my mind, man, where they can't see it. And if they ever knew what I was thinking, I'd be dead.